Okay, thank you so much for the kind introduction and thank you so much for inviting me. I enjoy the conference um, really a lot. So, and I'm uh, also very grateful for uh, uh, Rakiba because she, she uh, just uh, provided the floor for me because you can understand my case now really um, as one particular case in the context of, of the European world, so to speak. Um, the European cosmos, so to speak. The case I want to talk about happened at my university in Bielefeld in Germany. It's, uh, it has about 24,000 students, and uh, Bielefeld is one of 20 universities in the federal state of North Rhine-Westphalia. I just brought this with me just to show you where the little town of Bielefeld is. My contribution is based on a kind of autoethnographic approach in 2018, I was elected to the University Senate, namely to the University Senate's Equal Opportunities Commission. The slide here you can see now shows the university bodies that are involved in equal opportunities policies. There's first the rectorate. We have no presidents or vice presidents, but we have a rector and vice rector because we are uh, progressive and we have a reform, we are a reform university. So the rectorate is by, uh, which is by law or has to by law to ensure equality standards with the help of the vice rector for equal opportunities. And then there is of course the equal opportunities officer with her staff. Um, it's a full-time job, the officer is a full-time job and uh, is elected every four years. Then there is the Senate involved and, of course, the Commission for Equal Opportunities. I think it's important to know now that this um, um, Commission for Equal Opportunities consists of three representatives from each group, three students, three administrative uh, staff, three academic staff, and three professors. The Commission works closely with the Equal Opportunity Officer, advises the Rectorate and the Senate, and most notably, it reviews the Equal Opportunities Plan. The law explicit, explicitly provides for a right of consultation here. The adoption of the updated plan in January 2022 was the occasion of contestations, which is the focus of my contribution. As already mentioned, I was elected to this commission in 2018 as part of the regular university elections. In October 22, my professional colleagues and I were up for re-election for another two years, and we would have been elected by the professors in the Senate only just as all other groups were elected by their representatives. However, the week before the election, a message from these professors in the Senate reached us. It problematized our work as professorial representatives in the commission. And I got the following email. It says, Dear Mrs. Winkle, I'm writing to you today on an unpleasant matter. In the preparatory meeting, of the 12 professorial members of the Senate, clear criticism was expressed of the work of the Equal Opportunity Commission. In particular, it was criticized that the representatives of the university, of the university professors, that is my two colleagues and I, that we took positions in the discussions that were far from majority opinion of the professors of the Senate. An anonymous opinion poll showed that a very large proportion of Senate members would not vote for you. You are, of course, free to run. However, I would like to use this email to give you the opportunity to reflect on the situation and possibly withdraw your candidacy. End of quotation. I forwarded the email to the commission, to the equal opportunity officer, to, to the vice rector, and among others also to the student union. The text was understood by everybody as an attempt of intimidation. All expressed deep concern, honestly deep concern, considered it a scandal, and as organized voting out of explicit equality actors. We have not 
withdrawn our candidacies, but we were not elected, as announced. What had happened? I assume that this case exemplifies how right-wing anti-equality actors contest gender equality policies in Germany since about a decade, not only, but also in academia. Together with the defamation of gender studies as so-called gender ideology or gender mania, the fight against gender equality instruments is central to right-wing policies about the societal order. To explain this, I will sketch selected events in 2022 and reflect on the positions that the anti-equality actors have taken in the debates on the adoption of the gender equality plan. Before I sketch, um, um, yeah, very briefly the legal framework, and I will end with a short reflection on the question to what extent this case is an expression of right-wing positions. So on the national level, I have to mention the Framework Act for Higher Education, but much more important, of course, is the General Equal Treatment Act in Germany. And both laws frame the law in the federal states, such as in North Rhine-Westphalia, the Federal State Equality Act. It's important because it's important to know because education is the responsibility of the federal states in Germany. The Equality Act includes measures for the advancement of women, the compatibility of family and work, and it defines, among others, also the rights of the Equal Opportunity Officer. The rights of the Equal Opportunity Commission are regulated in the university basic regulations. And this regulation says, among others, that the Commission may make recommendations on all matters of gender equality, including the Equal Opportunities Plan. I won't go into the details of this plan. Um, I have, uh, you have the structure of this plan in front of you. I uh, gave you uh, this uh, handout. So it's not, it's not important to know this uh, for the uh, rest of the paper, but I just wanted to let you know this. Important is at the moment that the commission has the right to review and consult the plan point. So that's very important for me. So as already mentioned, it's the responsibility of the rectorate to update the plan. And practically, this is done in the office of the vice rector for equal opportunity with the help of the human resources department, simply because they have the data. And of course, the equal opportunity officer is involved. Following this, the commission reviews the updated plan before it's forwarded to the Senate for approval. Um, and now I come to the case. In December 2021, um, the commission of which I'm a member reviewed the updated gender equality plan in several meetings. Um, this work was done as usual under some time pressure. It's extensive paperwork, as you can imagine, and the Senate was expected to approve the plan in its regular meeting in January 2002. A week before the Senate's meeting in January, you know there is, is a, a regular structure in it, always a week before the Senate is meeting, two professors problematized the procedure due to the lack of time they had to read and discuss this plan. You could say, okay, that's a fair critique, all the time pressure and extensive documents are business, as usual, as everybody knows. However, at the same time, and this is interesting now, these professors issued two files of about seven pages each with doubts, criticism, and questions about the plan. So it means they had time at least to write these seven pages. These documents were sent to everybody who is relevant, the vice rector and the equal opportunity officer, and um, the Equal Opportunity Officer even answered these two lists before the general meeting, yet the equality plan was not passed. 
The Vice Rector for Equality tried to find a compromise and set up a work group, including the critics, to enable, I quote from uh, her email to me, to enable a detailed discussion of the content of the proposed changes to the equality plan. And she went on, the idea was to establish a working group in which the points of the equality plan that are considered critical are discussed and make concrete proposals for amending the framework equality plan. And this is where I came into the game <laughs> because I was very worried because the idea was on the one hand, which is okay to calm the critics, um, that's fine, and to postpone the pr approval for six months, which is legally possible. However, this failed for two reasons, the work group First of all, the work group has no legal basis, and this is why I was so concerned. And I was concerned that changes would be made without the consultation of the Senate's commission. I hence interfered. I became a member of the formal work group and made sure that the commission would be consulted again. From then on, I had access to all documents, and I tried my best to uh, also to um, yeah, interpret them according to um, scientific academic rules. So, and my position became even more exposed when I was appointed to be the rapporteur of the Senate's commission in May in the summer term. And I finally realized that the idea of finding a compromise would also fail because the criticism was born of a strong anti attitude toward gender equality politics. From a global analysis of the communication, the following central patterns of meaning emerged. First, a fundamental criticism of the goal of the equality plan, among others as monothematic, as monothematic, that is the critique of an exclusive interpretation of equality as the promotion of women was voiced, while men are not promoted, as the critics complain, where they are in the minority. This critic insinuates that equality policies discriminate against men. This also includes the opinion that the reality is not as worse as the plan and its language, and that was expressed several times, literally. It was criticized as harsh and too negative. This resulted, this is also a quotation, harsh and too negative. This resulted in the fundamental criticism of the self-understanding of the central equality work and the mode of our communication. That is, we were not addressed, addressed directly, but as the central equality work, depending on the situation, this could be the equal opportunities officer, the vice rector, or me as the representative of the commission. Repeatedly, poor communication, incorrect behavior, faulty information, faulty workflow of the central equality work were criticized at points that had already been explained several times. For example, the promotion of women in the awarding of scholarships, likewise, staffing has been constantly criticized as unjustified. The accusation of a wrong self-conception, this is also a quote, a wrong self-conception and communication of equality work was also criticized as unscientific, trying to prove that either the data or the interpretation was wrong. Sometimes the procedures were criticized as undemocratic and one-sided or also as a product of latches and delay. This happened although we explained the processes as they are prescribed by law. Overall, the criticism aims to delegitimize equality policies, not least because the anti-equality actors suspect that, I quote, far more is intended than equality. Yeah, they might be right. So, for example, when heteronormative marriage or a biologistic gender order is problematized, or men are prioritively referred to as white men. Finally, the critics emphasize that they, I quote, fortunately do not have any knowledge about sexual violence and that the way how sexual violence is addressed in the plan would harm the university's image. That there is no proof for a gender pay gap and the language of the equality plan is too complicated. It turned out in the working group that the critics had nearly no concrete suggestions for amendments but repeated in a simplistic way their basic critiques such as the equality plan is too long, too complex and it includes too many loan words. For example, not, not only for, for example but particularly the term 
gender is the center of heated uh, debates in Germany. While the critique was more and more simplistic during the readings of the plan in the Senate, the atmosphere became increasingly toxic. There was nearly no support from other colleagues. Instead, we had an hour-long discussion in May about the question why gender equality produces so much work and if it's not an unjustified job creation apparatus. The critiques did not argue anymore but relied on statements such as, I quote again, this gender equality plan is not needed here. Globally, yes, but not in Bielefeld. <laughs> or in the work group, we had a minority position. We were silenced. So this is self-victimization. And while you might long laugh now, and it's correct to laugh, I felt really losing grounds. I, there, was, there were so many things that triggered, triggered a lot in me, and I, I felt, I, yeah, I felt it's a really a, a toxic atmosphere. To make a long story short, in June the plan was finally passed, but without the votes of the critics. And as mentioned in the beginning, my colleagues and I were not re-elected by our professoral colleagues because we took positions that were far from the majority opinion. I come to my resume, if you allow me. In this book, so the question is, how can we understand this? In this book on masculine domination, Bourdieu carves out how the male unconscious operates. Bourdieu emphasizes the correspondence of the social structures and the cognitive structures of being and the doxa. Since the masculine mind is commonly understood as neutral, any attempt to question or change it is understood as an assault against the natural attitude, uh, respectively against the common sense and the normal order of being. The lesson I learned again is that the symbolic order of male domination is defended also in academia by the defamation of gender equality policies as an exaggeration of reality and excessive demands diametrically opposed to the common sense. This corresponds to recent quantitative data about anti-feminist positions among right-wing actors in Germany. The results show that hegemonic masculinity is the most important explanatory factor for right-wing positions next to religious fundamentalism and racism. And this finally leads me to right-wing populism. Part of the populist syndrome is an antagonistic division between the people and their common sense on the one hand, the people who fear a loss of security and status, and the corrupt elite on the other hand. And in this case, the corrupt gender elite and equal, the corrupt equal opportunities actors. I was told once that I can do my gender politics somewhere else. So, as right-wing populist, uh, right-wing populism theorist, sorry, right-wing populism theorist Kazmuda has pointed out, the claim to represent common sense and the issue of access to power is central to understanding populism. And as I would add, it's about male power. And hence, in my view, the case of the gender politics, the, the gender equality plan at Bielefeld University reflects this populist power question in many ways. Um, ma many thanks for your attention. I'm at the end now and just want to mention that uh, this group and the book, I uh, also spread some flyers here, uh, is going uh, into more uh, detail into the question of contestations of women's and gender rights. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.